Hi there. The Church of Nowhere, like all churches and all religious movements, is in an intimate connection with its environment, its social environment, the world of humankind and of society and community. You know, you, as a religion, you can't divorce yourself from what is going on around you, basically, uh, as individuals as well. And um, so ever since the 18th century, uh, there's been the rise of what I call the five noughties. <laughs> and the five noughties, uh, we'll just put them all in the naughty symbol. Because <laughs> this is the naughtiest symbol of all, uh, according to some people anyway. And these are five noughties from the perspective of religion, external religion, religious movements, churches, all over the world, different religions. Um, and the first naughty to arise since the 18th century is what I call self-interest. Um, and uh, the next one is what I would call, no particular order really, uh, atheism. And then you have humanism. Uh, and then you have secularism. Uh, and then you have materialism. <clears throat> and uh, these are the five noughties because uh, they really have um, stripped away uh, the power of the external religions of the world and sublimated them to an extent, redefined them, uh, made them more allegorical, symbolic or psycho significant, more archetypal, if you like. Um, and certainly, you know, but it wasn't always, I say the 18th century enlightenment, that's only in the West, of course, uh, because there were uh, atheistic movements in India uh, in the Middle Ages, and of course, Buddhism as well. Um, so it isn't just in the West uh, that this has actually happened. There's been atheism, secularism, materialism, um, and... Um, and uh, and all the rest of the, and self-interest, and individualism, as one might call. Self-interest, you know, is also uh, connected with individualization and individualism, uh, and pri what Tolkott, Tolkott Parsons called uh, privatization. So there's a privatization of religion as well. Uh, although you could argue that historically mysticism has been the ultimate expression of the privatization of religion, and has always been around, uh, if, if rather in conflict with external religion. Um, so what is the Church of Nowhere? Uh, what, what is the attitude uh, to, to all these five noughties? Um, and I suppose basically we should really uh, come to the, uh, the first one, which, which is atheism. Uh, and atheism, you know, is based on the fact that, um, you know, if you look at all the, they, they just haven't, well, people will say you can't prove a negative, so you can't prove there isn't a God, uh, but you certainly can't prove there is. And, and an atheistic attitude uh, is, is a healthy one. Um, and uh, a great book to read is Against All Religions by Grayling. Professor Grayling uh, and A.J. Ayers, of course, uh, is, is also his philosophical treatise on, on material philosophy. Uh, they're very good as well. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, atheists are, are basically... are basically... some people say it's a religion in its own right. Uh, so if that's true, then the fact that the Church of Nowhere adopts an atheistic attitude um, uh, to, to life, um, that there can't be any metaphysics, there can't be any paranormal or, paran or supernatural, natural kind of entity. Uh, not even an entity which, which came and went uh, as in, in a kind of deistic fashion. I mean, atheism is, is, is you know, is, is as it says, it's against uh, there being any theistic explanation at all for, for life on Earth. Uh, so life on earth came into being uh, by chance alone uh, and much of its processes are gathered by chance um, and, uh, uh, and evolution of course is pivotal um, and evolution of, of 
in terms of the universe and in terms of, of the Earth's biosphere. Uh, so, you know, atheism is pretty much, uh, some people say it's religion, therefore I suppose it's, if it is a religion, uh, then the Church of Nowhere is strongly atheistic. Um, now, humanism is quite interesting uh, because humanism, as far as I understand it, means that morality, uh, ethics, uh, is decided not through revelation. Uh, you, you don't have a God coming down and telling you the Ten Commandments. Uh, you don't have a God informing you of what is the good. Uh, you work out the good uh, from philosophical principles, first principles, and then you build uh, ethics and you build morality uh, from, from philosophical inquiry. And, um, you know, you come up with such concepts as the as utilitarianism, which is the maximize, maximizing the happiness of the greatest number. Um, and you judge a, an action uh, by that criterion, basically. If it maximizes the happiness of the greatest number, then it is a, a good act, a moral act, as one might say. Um, so, you know, from philosophical inquiry, uh, what is the good? Uh, what constitutes a good action and what constitutes a bad action um, and is there such a thing as good and evil anyway um, these are, are, are sort of a result in, in a humanistic interpretation of morality rather than a religious interpretation of morality uh, and considering the church of nowhere follows uh, is atheistic in, in, in essence uh, then obviously it, it, the way it comes to its um, uh, particular ethical considerations such as veganism and minimal lifestyle uh, and antinatalism uh, comes from a, a, a philosophical inspection uh, or is hot on the heels of the philosophical inspections of other philosophers such as Jeremy Bentham um, and uh, J.S. Uh, Mill I suppose, well Bentham mostly I suppose really uh, and, and Singer, um, Singer and Glover uh, in, in, the, in the last century um, uh, and Jeremy Bentham, of course, uh, a century before that. Um, now, uh, as far as secularism is concerned, well, this is this is a very powerful, positive uh, thing in society, uh, whereby you know religion is taken out of politics, and um, this has sort of happened in the West. Uh, but um, in so far as atheism is a religion, or could be said to be a religion, um, then uh, then I suppose. If, if a secular society is based on atheism, then in fact, um, you know, you could say that secularism isn't purely or isn't very well developed. Uh, but certainly secularism is when you take religion out of politics, basically. Um, that, that's the essential key to understanding secularism. Um, and people become secular uh, in the sense that they don't need any form of external religion uh, to express um, to express them themselves, um, or even to express some sort of rudimentary metaphysics uh, that the popular can't, can't culture might support. Uh, for example, there, there is a belief in life after death. For example, uh, in a popular in the popular mind, um, but certainly you don't need any external religion uh, to to sort of give that um, thought credence or give that belief credence at all. Um, so there's no external, so the law is not founded on religion uh, and the rulers are not founded on, on religious, or they don't have to be religious people in order to be rulers. Um, so that's a very powerful uh, development in, the, in Western society is the growth of secularism. Uh, and then of course there's materialism, uh, which can either be thought of as, direct, as, as a strictly philosophical concept um, there is, you know, the brain is just a, a material computer, uh, and when you die, that computer ceases to function. Um, so there's no, there's no sort of uh, soul uh, knocking around in our minds. Um, uh, you know, the material. Every explana explanation is is based on material. It's based on the stuff of the universe, on energies, uh, physics, which physics has identified. Um, so materialism, in that sense. Uh, but now we come to the, um, the break, basically, uh, between the Church of Nowhere and materialism. Uh, because when materialism, uh, it could be taken as consumerism uh, and, uh, and the power of commerce and the politics of commerce uh, and the fact that the, the political landscape is shaped uh, by capitalism, for example, 
then of course the, the Church of Nowhere uh, comes into conflict uh, with society on the basis of its uh, consumer consumerism and on the basis of its, um, of its uh, belief in, in the power of money and in the meaning of money over everything else, over all other considerations, including, um, including preserving the uh, Earth's biosphere. Um, so the fact that people think more of money than anything else uh, is a problem uh, as far as the uh, Church of Nowhere is concerned. Um, so it is anti-materialist in that sense, uh, even though it might support secularism um, on, the, on, the other, uh, on the other hand, uh, and it might support, uh, you know, um, humanism very much so, uh, and of course uh, atheism uh, as a working philosophy. Uh, as, a, as a sort of basis uh, for, you know, we derive meaning not from the, from the supposed existence of a god, we derive meaning from life itself uh, and from our connection with the Earth's biosphere as well, uh, which is sort of impersonal um, force or impersonal algorithm uh, that controls, that is part and controls everything in, on this planet, or most of the things on this planet anyway. Um, and then we come to self-interest, and this again uh, is where the, where the Church of Nowhere might take uh, issue uh, with self-interest and the concept of self-interest, because, you know, it's one thing to have enlightened self-interest, uh, whereby you, you, you know, you help yourself and other people at the same time, and in helping others, you also help yourself at the same time. Uh, to, to out and out selfishness, uh, which is negative uh, self-interest, uh, where, whereby you are ruthless and put yourself above the welfare of everybody else, including the welfare of other beings. Um, and self-interest, uh, you know, self-serving self-interest uh, is part of what governs, uh, is at the heart of the criticism of statism and corporatism and globalism. Uh, that you have a, like a cartel of, of self-serving, self-interested capitalist um, conglomerates uh, who basically, you know, um, don't care about individuals. They don't care about the West, for example, uh, that, which gave them life in the first place. Uh, they just uh, go wherever the money is. They go wherever the maximum profit uh, can be can be can be made. Um, so they, you know, they they. They believe in, in the free movement of people, uh, whereby they flood uh, the local job market uh, with cheap labour and non-unionised labour at that um, on one hand, and then they take the factories uh, away to areas of the world where they can pay very little wages um, so that uh, they maximise profits in that way. Um, and of course the free and the movement of, of huge sums of money uh, most of which actually don't exist really, theoretical money around the world is also uh, part of how they maximise their profits uh, and also they buy up, um, they buy up small companies and, uh, and they sort of they condense everything together and try for monopolisation as well. Um, so when it comes to self-interest uh, and materialism, uh, then the Church of, of Nowhere, um, this is where they take issue with society. And this is where they want. This is where they they want to change society in that sense, make society more ethical, uh, less materialistic, uh, less um, less self interested, and they want to decrease the idea of self interest. Um, and um, you know, for example, um, um, people have different ideas about taxation, uh, but one of the things about somebody, you know, I was talking to somebody about this and and we were asking the question how is it that um, you know high taxation is so hated uh, how is it that anybody who you know wants to raise taxes in order to uh, create um, better uh, social services for example is is thought of as a Marxist and a threat to society and how was it you know that after the Second World War taxes were so high uh, and, and people paid those high taxes as well, like in Britain, 97% super tax, 40% uh, tax uh, for unmarried uh, males uh, in full-time uh, employment and so on and so forth, uh, and 60% tax on corporations and businesses and, and, and self-employed people. Uh, how was it that, that they 
demanded so much money in stamps uh, as well to order to fund uh, the um, fund the um, pension services and things like that. You see, and I suppose the answer is that people were less selfish, or if you like, less in in the nineteen forties, early fifties. They were less self. They didn't have this idea of self interest because they just come through a war, uh, which required a self sacrifice. Um, and self-interest was actually frowned upon. I mean, you, you know, you were you were a black marketeer or something if you were into self-interest, uh, into putting you maximizing profits, uh, you know, uh, by selling uh, coupons and things like that. Then you were a bad person. Uh, and also because they'd been during the war, everyone had been told what to do, uh, and they're much more compliant. The state had much more control over people. There was much less individualism. Uh, and there was greater uh, awareness of the community and its needs and putting the needs of the community before your own needs uh, during the war, Second World War. Um, and that continued after to, well, the, the mid, late 50s, really. Um, I mean, it was rationing in Britain until 54, I think, if I'm the right in saying. Um, and so therefore, people didn't mind paying high taxes. They wanted to create also a, a new world. Uh, out of the shattered uh, remnants of Europe after the Second World War, and they wanted to create a, a world where war didn't happen, uh, where scarcity, you know, amongst the working classes, uh, was a thing of the past. Because in a way, people identified scarcity um, as been one of the reasons why the Second World War actually happened and why the why the Nazis came to power. Because uh, it was scarcity that that drove the Nazi movement in the first place. Um, and so people were much more, uh, they weren't exactly communist, uh, but they were much more interested in this idea of socialism, you know, which, which, is, uh, which is attending to the needs um, uh, of the many uh, instead of the few. And, uh, you know, uh, to each according to his need and from each according to their means, uh, which is the principle of socialism. So socialism allows you to make as much money as you like, provided um, that you pay money in taxes in order to care for the community uh, and society which made you rich in the first place, you see. Uh, and that's the principle of socialism. Uh, well, people don't like that principle anymore because self-interest uh, and materialism have taken over uh, slowly uh, and people uh, you know, don't have any sense of community uh, anymore. Uh, they only have a sense of their own individual success uh, in life. Uh, and uh, over and above uh, the success and fortunes and even the well-being of other people. Uh, so even though secularism has been positive and humanism definitely positive uh, and, and atheism sort of there in the background um, and the Church of Nowhere would support these sort of three uh, noughties, as I call them, which are developed from the 18th century, um, certainly materialism uh, and self-interest wouldn't be amongst, wouldn't, wouldn't be classed as positive things necessarily. Uh, I mean, okay, it's one thing to be an individual and not be a doormat. Um, it's also one thing to, to also uh, want to preserve your individual human rights, for example. Uh, but at the same time, there needs to be a more of a community sense. Uh, there needs to be less self-interest in a way. Uh, and, and, and especially if that self-interest is expressed through unbridled capitalism and consumerism, uh, then that is where the Church of uh, Nowhere would, would take issue as well. Um, but so you can actually uh, be less materialistic, uh, even though, ironically enough, you see, materialism and consumerism actually drives a sort of Ke the Kenyan um, idea, economic model, basically. I mean, you've got to have people buying stuff and selling stuff in order to make the economy uh, sort of roll. Um, in order to actually make the economy robust, uh, you've got to actually increase people's spending power, in actual fact. Um, so it, it's a complex issue, uh, because if you take away that spending power and you take, take away that power to borrow money as well, that interest, uh, and to lend money, uh, then in a sense you create a very stagnant economic uh, environment. Um, so it's not all uh, wonderful, uh, really, when we reduce materialism uh, and we find ourselves in a contradiction, on one hand saying materialism is bad and on the other saying materialism is the actual fuel uh, which, which provides the economic growth which people need uh, in order to pay the taxes, in order to create the welfare state, for example. 
Um, so it, it, that, when we get into economics, we get into very complex and uh, muddy areas of thought. <laughs> um, and meditation, uh, where would this all come into? I, uh, because I think uh, meditation basically is, is in a way the way that one would tackle self-interest uh, and the problem of uh, the ethical dilemma of being too self-interested or interested in your own selfish desires. So meditation perhaps would be one way that the Church of Nowhere would would counter uh, this whole unbridled self-interest of modern times um, and, and seek to build a community spirit uh, via the power of meditation and perhaps even by promoting collective meditation in some way. Um, so basically this is the sort of kind of the attitude uh, that the Church of Nowhere would have to mo our modern life. Thank you very much for listening.